over the years. How exciting is an opportunity like this to be able to step up on short notice, be able to turn around so quickly and get back to work? Uh, it feels good, man. It's uh, something that I'm not used to. It's been fight, surgery, recover, get healthy, get cleared, take a fight, go back in there, and it's just been a cycle over years. So this is... It's like new again. Yeah. That last performance, obviously incredible win there. How big was that one for you as well, to, to not just get the result, but have the performance as well and know that I'm still that guy? It was good. It, it, it was something that I feel like in my career and in my personal life, there, there was a lot of redemption that, that I had to get done. And, um, and I feel like it was just a perfect outcome. Absolutely. Now you get this opportunity. You faced, obviously, the absolute best in the world. Diego's kind of new to the organization, but looks dangerous. How do you think his skills stack up to the, to the talent that you have faced? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's, there's just the facts. I faced who's who in their prime uh, at the best of their peak. That's it's good to know that I have that. But it's also, you know, it's also good to, to respect Diego for who he is and what he brings to the table and for the fact that he's willing to, to come up and challenge me or step in on two weeks' notice and, and, and fight. You know, I remember when I was there, and I know that kind of mentality and the heart that it takes. So I'm not, I'm not looking at it as uh, anything less than the people I faced. If anything, every single fight that I have is the most important fight of my career. Nice. What do you feel like the stakes of this fight are, right? Because it doesn't seem like it's necessarily clear. The title picture is kind of clogged up, but you know you're right there at the top. So how, how do you view the stakes of this matchup? Uh, for, for me, not much. Like crazy stakes, right? That's why people were like, why'd you take this fight? Uh, for him, obviously, it puts him in, in a perfect title contention. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the stakes there. Nice. And last thing for me, you know, when this fight was announced, I think everybody as a fan just kind of stepped back and like, oh my God, that's going to be a hell of a fight. Do you feel like this is going to be a hell of a fight or do you feel like this is one where you can go out and dominate and maybe show that, hey, I've, you know, you're not ready for this level yet? This is one that's going to test where, where I'm at, you know. This is, is going to be like, okay, you got these hungry lions coming up and, and wanting to take your spot. They're almost there. You've been in here for a while. Are you able to hold down your situation and your position? And granted, like I said, it's on two weeks' notice. So there's a lot of factors in there, but still, you know, the fact that I'm still down to take these fights on short notice, that's a dope part. Brian, over here. Uh, I asked Diego in uh, this question when he was in here about a straight-up jiu-jitsu match. Uh, how do you think you'd, you'd fare against him? I think uh, I could be able to submit him in a straight jiu-jitsu match. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, no surprise, he felt the opposite. He said he's been doing this since five. He kind of, he didn't know if you do any competitive jujitsu or anything like that. So when you do watch his grappling, uh, is it different than what you've seen in MMA? Because like I think in a previous interview you said it's a lot more um, attacking uh, grappling rather than just being defensive. What I said again? In his mind, he obviously thinks he would get the better of you because he didn't know how much uh, competitive jujitsu you had been doing and he had been doing it since he was five. Oh. Okay. Um, what do, in terms of his actual grappling, is it any different than what you've seen in from any of your MMA opponents or anything in the UFC? Yeah, he's uh, he, he's someone who who's always attacking. You know, when when you have him on the ground, from what I've seen, is is he gets straight to work. He doesn't play around there. He he does he moves a lot. He's very active. He's always hunt, uh, submission hunting, and um, like a competitor would. Ryan, uh, you told me the other day that you're planning to donate right here 100,000 of your purse, and I know you put some comments on like the Instagram posts and stuff. Is there anything you want to clarify about you know your motivation for doing that? I know you posted a little video as well. Yeah, um, I feel like the internet's always going to have something to say, right? So that is what it is. A lot of people are saying, "No, oh, no, man, you fell for the biggest scam and this and that, whatever it is," and that, that couldn't be further from the case, man. My marbles are all still up here. I'm still fully, I got no CTE, no nothing, relax. And if you experienced and you saw what I saw, you saw all these men, you saw the ability to, to change and help them. 
and me being in a situation where I can, that's what I'm going to do. You know, this has nothing to do with getting scammed. It has nothing to do with this. This is just, this is my heart, man. I got a big heart. You've seen it in all my fights. You've seen it with war, but you guys haven't seen it with humanity. You know, that's what this is. This is helping a lot of men who are lost in this world help find peace, joy, tranquility, and purpose. That's what this is about. And uh, you told me as well that this fight kind of interrupted the plan to move up to lightweight. Uh, I don't know how much like you were bulking up or whatever, but now we're about 48 hours from weigh-ins. How are you feeling going into that, you know, having reverted back to featherweight? Um, like I did like back in the day, you know? Back in the day, I would just be big for no reason. Just ate a lot. And then now I'm big because I'm working out. So bo both have their thing. I just have to shrink down again to 45. Yeah, this time in now two days. So it's going to be not so pleasant, but it's going to be done. Do, do you think it's the last time you'll have to make this weight? No, I'm going to have to make featherweight again. I just hope not on two weeks' notice. Brian right here. I wanted to follow up on that faith thing. For you, having that new sense of purpose and being able to be saved again, why do you feel like now was the time to really open up on that? Because if you look at a lot of things now, like if you really open up your eyes, uh, it's, a lot of things are happening. A lot of bad things are being too normal now. You know, it used to be not so normal, not so common. And, and now everything is like bad is the new good. And I'm here to, to pop that bubble and say that's not true. I'm curious from your perspective, um, being in the spotlight for so long, everyone always talks about that pressure um, and understanding that journey of what you've just gone through, going into faith and being saved again. Do you feel like there's an added pressure now because you have this connotation behind you? What do you mean added pressure? In terms of being a Christian and the, stereotypical, the stereotypes that come with that, an added pressure of, okay, now I have this image even more to live up to. Oh, that, no, not at all, man. At the end of the day... Uh, something I want to leave behind is to be tough and to be good, All right? That's it. I want to be tough and I want to be good, and that's something I can leave behind. Good, a good leader, and uh, I inspire to become one day in, day in, like day in and day out. I inspire to become a better leader. I have two boys back at home that are looking up to me, and it is my responsibility to step it up. And I have to fight myself every single day to better myself. And that's what I'm going to do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Brian, right here. Uh, Brian, last time you fought at the T-Mobile, you had probably one of the better walkouts of several years with the Purge walkout. I haven't heard you talk much about it. Can you just talk about that concept and the way it came together on the broadcast? Because a lot of fans really loved it. Oh, man. Um... That walkout was, you want the story behind the walkout? Absolutely, all of it. Brian BC. <laughs> um, so at that, at that time, uh, I was living in an apartment. I had left the house and everything to when I separated. And there's this neighbor upstairs who just every hour it was like two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning. I'm like, dude, you guys go to sleep. Like, what's going on? Like, come on now. <laughs> like, I got, I got a fight I got to train for. I got a world title. Like, what are you guys doing? Um, and then something, I was, I was watching, I forgot what, I think it was like some reels or something, and the Purge song came on, right? And I started fantasizing, not the best thing, but like if the Purge was real, like the first thing I'm doing is I'm going upstairs. <laughs> like... <laughs> Cause I like I'm not a I'm not a snitch right and I'm not a complainer but dude I even hit up the landlord I was like yo like can you tell them to be quiet please like I know they snitched on me before because I've been playing with my kids a little too rough like I was running around one time and I was like I'm gonna kill you and then they're like the kids were screaming they were about to call the cops because they thought I was gonna kill my kids oh. yeah it was that it was to me it wasn't that crazy right we're, that's how we play around but. Uh, I never said nothing. And finally, I said, hey, man, like, you know, these guys or whoever's up there, I don't want to be rude, but come on now. 
like it feels like they're dragging something across the floor all night. Like if you need help, let me know. <laughs> and uh, after I complained, I swear it kept happening. Like even like they doubled down on it. So that was just in my head, like dude, like if the purge was real. I'd go upstairs and just handle business. And um, <laughs> I don't know why, I, just, I would stay up all night and I'm like, dude, The Purge, that song, I found a remix to it. And I was like, if I had the mask, what mask would I wear? Like if I was to commit these crimes, you know? Like <laughs> how would I approach their house? And that was the concept. Just be all hoodied up with a lighted mask. And, uh, and then I was like, dude, what if I walked out to this? Wouldn't that be dope? It has not, I can't, there's no logos on this. The mask costs $5. Cheapest walkout ever. And uh, the, the soundtrack was dope. And I'd mess with all of you guys in the crowd. You know, like imagine they shut everything down. Or at least the song I originally had was a little more scary. It felt like a little more real. So I was hoping to like make everyone in the crowd kind of get scared a bit. Like, yeah, hold up, like, what's going on? Did they, did they really allow it, or what's going on? Why is the UFC doing this? But the UFC wouldn't go along with my plan. They had to make it to where it's like, hey, like, it has to be known it's a walkout. Can't have people panicking. I said, I got you. And uh, that was the theme and the idea behind that. And I called my managers and everyone and told them my idea, and they're like, okay, let's go for it. And then now it's in one of the best walkouts ever when it's been a conversation of topic, so it worked out. Did the coaches all know that story, like ahead of time, or did yeah, you just they, tell them, hey, we're doing the purge? No, yeah, I told them I want to kill my neighbors at that time. <laughs> at that time, yeah. Thank you, man. Brian, up front. Over here. Yeah. Hey, brother. Um, is there going to be any second guessing when Bruce Buffer's calling your name this fight and you're going no, I'm not jumping up, dude. <laughs> Be I'm no not problem. jumping up. I'm taping my ankles just, just, just because. And uh, I'm going to make sure I don't twist my ankles because that one was scary. And then uh, if I can maybe get one more story out of you, there was uh, you were on a podcast back in the day and you were talking with Brendan Schaub about this. But I feel like you didn't get enough opportunity to speak about it. Was there almost a fight between Shia LaBeouf and you and Brendan? No comment. And uh, no, there was no fight between us. It, we were on set. We were filming uh, the movie. And uh, just, just things got a little, out, not out of hand, but just it was what it was. But yeah, we, uh, yeah, Shia ended up on the table. Someone slammed him on the table and he hit one of the actors in the face with a prop gun and it just, yeah, it was a little, like a little scuffle, but it was nothing crazy, nothing big. And then is, is the BMF title out there? Is that something you might have your eyes on one day? I don't know. That, that's something that I haven't even paid no, no thought to. Um, I think it was more like a, like a higher weight class thing, but then it moved to 55 and then Max did what he did with Gaethje and it was, just, wow, it was BMF. They can't take that from him. That, that's, a, that's a scary dude, especially in the end, the way he did things. I'm sure all of you guys can, can agree to that. And uh, yeah, right now, I feel like I'm in my own lane, and I'm going to see what, where this career takes me. Um, you returned last time out and pulled off a great finish against Ye Ye. Um, you spoke about your faith and, and, and everything like that. Uh, do you approach these fights a little bit differently in terms of your mindset now? Absolutely. Uh, before I would fight for my own selfish reason, personal greed, um, I had my own agenda, you know, my own plans. One day I achieved all of it. I didn't like it. I got everything I wanted, I didn't like it. So now I'm, I'm doing things different. And can you talk a little bit about 
perhaps your preparation obviously it's short notice but you know where where are you at mentally going into this fight on you know sh short notice i'm as good as it's going to get for a two week notice fight you know um there's there's everything moving too fast it feels like just a week ago i was in an airplane and now i'm right here talking to you so it's just it's it's way too much to try to figure out and understand i'm not going to uh, I'm just gonna do what I. I'm just gonna go on autopilot and cut the weight and then, and fight. That's it. After the fight is is kind of when I'm gonna let things sink in, and that's kind of when I'm gonna wanna just be alone for a bit and just let everything just process, I guess. And how do you see the fight playing out with Diego on Saturday? I feel like it's gonna be a great fight. You know, he's 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 a young, hungry lion. Uh, I've been here already for a bit at the, at, at the you know the top three, so it, it's it's, it's going to be who you know like when you watch uh, National Geographic and you see the you know the line the young line that's no old, the older line that's 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 the fight we're going to get. Thank you. Yeah, Brian. I know you know a lot of people are excited to see Conor McGregor, but I think it could be argued that this card now is is maybe better from a you know a talent standpoint a competitive standpoint do you feel that and do you feel any pressure maybe to live up to what people expected from this car no i'm not trying to live up to anyone's expectations uh, i did that for a big amount of my for almost my whole life uh like i like i was talking to her right now um this is something that i just i'm doing right now without thought and then when when it's said and done then i can kind of kick back a little bit and watch everything and then just let everything sink in. And then how did the situation with the neighbors ever get resolved? Did it just stop? I bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 